editing my main page for the sales web page. And remember, it only needs to be one page. Uh, you don't need to do a multiple page website. Um, the first thing that you can do is to change the name of the page. Uh, so I'm just going to call this test uh, for now, just so that I know what it is. And then also a page layout. Uh, you can either do a large banner image across the top, this sort of feature, um, or you can just do a blank content area. And generally this is what I start with uh, because I like to pull in my own images where I want them as opposed to being uh, sort of controlled by uh, this particular page layout that um, you would need to change the HTML source code uh, to work with. So I'll just do the, the basic one. You can always go back and change the page layout after you've already designed the page. So let's click edit. And now it's going to bring you just to the basic um, blank um, section where you can start to build your web page. So few things that a lot of people want to put on a page initially is a title, some sort of paragraph or body text, and then a picture. And there are a couple different ways to do that. Um, you can use the paragraph with title if you want to do that, or um, if you wanted to add a picture with that. And notice as I just drag it down, it shows me where it's going to go. Um, you could do something like this and see so you still get the title, the body text, and then you have this image. The only complication is you don't, um, once you choose that one, you don't really have a way to move the image if say you wanted to get it over here. You're sort of stuck in this particular uh, shape. And so that's what I was telling you about before is that you want to think about blocks. So I'm going to delete this element and notice I click the red X and then it confirms that for me. Um, what I'm going to do starting with the blank page is actually pull down a title block, a paragraph block, and a picture block separately. Um, and so if I do that, I can decide whether I want the picture above the text, whether I want the picture below the text. Um, and then, you know, if I chose to make this larger, smaller font, change the color, all of the different text features, uh, this creates a link if you wanted to do that. Um, you know, if you had the link to the Taylor Place Residence Hall or a link to an email address, if you wanted to upload a file, you can do that as well. Um, but again, as we were talking, what if you wanted to have the image over here on the right hand side and then your text on the left hand side, but you wanted them in line? And part of what I was telling you before um, is to be very aware of this multiple columns section. So what I would do um, is I would actually utilize that column um, element to then pull my paragraph text into one side, the image, oops, pardon me, I'll probably do that a couple times. If you ever need to drag something, just look for these three little lines and you'll see the hand appear. Uh, bring them over. And now I've got text on the left, image on the right. Um, say I've got a small image, I want to sort of shrink that space, I just drag the column over. The text will sort of fill in here. Um, and maybe I put the text in and now I decide I'd like to have a little bit more white space here, a little bit, you know, a little bit of buffer between the text and the image. I can always add in an extra column, move my image back to the far right, and then sort of give myself a blank item. Um, and that's the great thing about sort of putting uh, the column space in there. You can always add you know, an additional one. If you want to add four, you need some more space on the side, but you can always go back to two. Um, just making sure that going from the left to the right, um, everything's in those first two columns and it'll just adjust it for you. So um, that's the way I would work um, is in those blocks. You can always, if you know this is your first paragraph then you want another paragraph, you can bring it down, put it on the bottom and notice that text is going to go flow all the way from the left to the right underneath the image. Um, you could also just just sort of playing around showing you some things. Um, if you wanted to go back, say, to a three column, you can put, you know, three images very easily, one, two, three, across the top, or you can actually put them below each other. So um, that was not totally in the wrong spot. Um, if you wanted to do, you know, two images in one column, you could do that as well. Um, you know, maybe doing four and then bringing in your paragraph. Again, I'm just sort of showing you all the things and the ways that you can sort of build it so that uh, your mind will be working as you're thinking about uh, your mock-up. So that's thinking about units as thinking about blocks. Um, an image should be its own blocks. In some ways, a paragraph should be its own block. And any sort of title text should be its own block as well.
Uh, about the only other things that I want to make sure you're aware of, the button here you can pull down. Um, I'm just going to stick it right here at the bottom um, and I'll center it because that's what I like to do. Um, for your call to action, you need to have a click here to buy now, which I'll type in for you um, just so you can see. Um, this particular um, I don't need it down there. Uh, this particular form uh, likes to have this little arrow on the side. Um, and uh, you can also change the style of the button. This one you can't, but in uh, several of the other ones you can. And you can move it around however you'd want uh, to make it fit where you want it best. Um, you can add a link if you wanted, um, but again, since it's not a real working website, I'm just having you create this, this first piece. Uh, you don't actually have to link it to anything, but you can play around with location of it. Um, also in the more, uh, the divider I was talking about, uh, which you know might sort of section off if you had sort of a, a top area um, that you wanted to have a certain type of copy and then that really clean line and then some sort of bottom area at the bottom, uh, that works really well. Uh, too. Um, so that's just a, a general overview uh, of the design. Um, how to work with the images, I promised this as well. Uh, looking at adding these images, let me go in and click here to edit. Um, I would search through Weebly. Um, I had searched for studying earlier um, and had found sort of uh, this great image of a guy who looked like he was totally uh, done with studying, so trying to conjure up that idea of uh, the students that these parents are buying their um, packages for. Um, what you can do once you put it in that column, as you see, um, if I open up the column a little bit, the image gets larger, but I can also make it smaller. If um, I'm just going to pull it up here outside of the columns, that's the normal size. Obviously, that's pretty big. If I want to make it smaller, I just look here for the red box I can shrink it to a size that is much more appropriate and then if I wanted to center it on the right hand side I just change that in excuse me um, the the bar that that appears um, you can add captions if you want you can link the image um, you can have it open a larger these are just other things for you to know because uh, we'll probably use Weebly again uh, most of you will for your final assignment um, but part of the reason why I would do that, notice it was a free photo, and when we go in um, to, I'll click replace image just to show you, um, it says here at the bottom that these photos are available via Creative Commons licensing uh, that allow attribution, so you're able to use it as long as you attribute it. And so what uh, Weebly automatically does uh, adds that attribution to the website footer, so if you come back in, let me scroll down and show you uh, f the photo is being used under uh, Creative Commons license from the actual owner. So it takes care of all of that attribution to make sure that this is an absolutely fair use of this image um, as requested by the person who actually created uh, this image and published it on the web. So you're very much in line with um, you know, ethical practices and uh, fair use copyright law by using this image in this way on Weebly. So uh, that's a really great thing. And so I, I generally suggest if you can find it through the image search, absolutely use that one, uh, not only in this assignment, but any other time that uh, you're working with a website like this. Uh, last little thing I wanted to share with you is just what some of these other tabs do. Um, in the design tab, this is where you could change. Um, say you didn't really like this theme, it's a little too gray, you wanted something maybe a little brighter. Um, you can always go in, click a different one, and it'll instantaneously update. So now this one's a little bit, you know, a little bit brighter. It does update your font styles, um, but leaves each of those individual elements in the same place. So you can very easily try out some new looks without worrying about messing up your site. And you can always go back to the uh, initial one that you chose before. Let's see if I can find it up here. Um, I believe it might have been that one. Let's try it. Oh, not quite the same, but close enough. Um, also under design options, this is where you could change the font. So if your paragraph title font, I don't really have one um, in here, but if you wanted to change it to something um, a little bit more interesting, you just change the font and notice that it'll automatically update. Um, and you can do the same thing with the size as well. Um, whatever's typed in there will, will adjust. Um, the same thing for the paragraph text. Uh, most of those in terms of defaults are going to be in the sans serif category, which is what I suggest. 
doing it in uh, Arial, I think, is standard for most. You can do a, a serifed font um, if you want, but I would very much stay away from any of the script or the uh, design sort of decorative fonts for the majority of, of your font in, in the web page. You want to make the majority of the font easy to read, and so those sans serif are going to do that for you. Use uh, the titles and the headings to add graphic interest, um, and the button itself is in some form of uh, graphic interest. Probably no more than two fonts, maybe three at the most, um, but if you're using a lot of bolding, underlining, and italics, uh, you can actually just stick to one or two fonts um, without making it look busy and, and messy. You can also change the color of the links if you want them to do so. Uh, pages is where you would add new pages, but notice you're only doing uh, one. Um, so again, if I wanted to go in and add that banner, um, I can do that, and now it's got this big image at the top that I can edit um, if I wanted. So you can also take it out. I hope that's uh, a sort of an answer to all of the questions that you might have. Um, about the only other item is the settings tab, which allows you to change the title of your site or change the site address if you realize you've made some mistakes on the first time. But a lot of you are probably going to be able to, to get that done right away from the beginning. Um, I've done quite a bit. If I already had my design drawn, if I had my text written, um, I've been uh, working with this video here. It looks like about 11 minutes. Uh, so you could very easily have a website put together in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, um, if you've got all that just to copy and paste in. And then you can spend the additional time that you have really just sort of tweaking and playing around with uh, the nuances of Weebly, finding those perfect images, choosing the font that you think is most appropriate, um, and maybe deciding what color scheme you want, whether you want to go with more of the traditional ASU branding, or when you pull up uh, the Taylor Place website, you'll see that they've got a little bit of a different color scheme. So. Um, you can also go somewhere completely different if you want to uh, tie it into um, maybe the, the, you know, the event or uh, match it with an image that you happen to find that, that you really like. So um, that's the way I would start, uh, get all the content on here. Um, we'll go through a draft process and then I'll be able to give you some pointers and tips. Um, and as you can see, you can make a lot of those changes without really affecting too much of a design. Um, one last thing I did think of, you can always go in and duplicate a page if you want uh, by clicking copy page. Um, if you create one design and you really sort of like it but you're not sure um, what it would look like if you move things around but you don't want to mess up your original, you can always copy the page, uh, maybe give it a new name, go in and edit it and notice it looks uh, just the same um, as the original. Um, and then you can sort of go from there and choose which one that you prefer and delete the other page. Um, you can always hide these in the navigation menu if you want by clicking that. Let me go back and show you what that does and now you don't get all those individual tabs at the top. Um, you can always just access them through pages. All right, that's all I've got. Um, the next bit will just uh, wrap up some things that I also want to tell you, but I hope this has been a helpful video for you as you prepare to design your Weebly web page. Thanks so much. <laughs>